So I'm going to be repeating a claim uh, made by the advocate that uh, pirating music, uh, the pirating of music considerably affects the possibility of growth in the music industry. I have five points that first of all pirates are affected, consumers are affected, retailers, the uh, record producers, and then also the artists themselves. Now there would be problems with the evidence as far as lack thereof or the misuse of some of the evidence. So first of all, I want to clarify something. Bootlegging and uh, piracy were used interchangeably in the speech, but there's a difference between the two. So from the business economy, uh, market research, finance, and income tax informants, uh, bootlegging is often inc incorrectly referred to as piracy, but there's an important difference between the two. Bootlegging is trading in records that record companies either do not own or are unwilling to release, and piracy is the legal copy and sale of records that are available commercially. So with that stated, the first claim was that pirates are affected and that one of the uh, use of evidence is that pirates uh, that they're cracking down on piracy all over the world. Specifically that Anderson wrote an art article about a uh, filtering downloads in the UK. But he also went on to say that whether it'll work or not is questionable. And while parts of the plan are unobjectable or seem like excellent ideas, some of the enforcement materials feel a little bit weak. And they report uh, uncritically close estimates of losses from illegal downloads, which are notoriously hard to quantify because you don't know if the product would have been bought if it wasn't uh, pirated. So he goes further on to say the plan looks like something drawn up from industry groups. It's little sign that there's a huge amount of creative uh, creativity represented by creative commoners will be considered, or that education will provide a robust education of their dealings. So really they're saying that this plan just doesn't seem very well thought out and that it's really not cracking down on piracy and it's that it's made by, these, by groups that aren't going to be benefiting the artists. Mm -hmm. this, and he further goes on, the advocate also claims that his anonymous friend received an email about a hearing that he was going to engage in with Columbia, Columbia Records for parody music, but this information is unreliable as it is a personal experience and there's no way to test whether or not uh, it's actually true. So the second claim is that consumers are being affected. He said that consumers are being affected because of the money saved by pirates and bootleggers and what they steal. But he has no evidence on how much this has affected the consumer as, or even if it has any effect on them. And um, furthermore, bootlegging can actually benefit the consumer because these materials would otherwise be unavailable to them. So um, he also said that as bootleggers steal, the cost goes up from everyone. As I said, bootleggers aren't um, competing with the sales of legitimate things that the record companies have put out, so this doesn't really make any sense. And he doesn't uh, say any type of uh, loss on the part of um, the consumers or how much they're being affected. So their claim is that retailers are being affected. So he claims that uh, retailers lose money because of the inability to compete with the notion of free and that less, uh, job, less revenue means fewer jobs. But he didn't mention any businesses that have closed because of this or any people who are losing their jobs. So there's no way to quantify what this is. And it can also be attributed to other reasons. Is it the economy or is it the fact that there's piracy going on? So the advocate uh, also claimed in his point number four that the backbone of the music industry, the record companies, are being affected. Um, the record companies are being affected by the inability to support all their other music and they're having a decline in sales. Again, this can be attributed to the economy or that they're not selling records that are very popular rather than just, uh, rather than attributing it to piracy. So each sale by a pirate represents the loss of the legitimate sale. As in Anderson's article, it's really hard to quantify whether that would be a legitimate sale or not. So you can't really say that each pirate is um, responsible for that loss. So uh, Louis Beeps, who he cited but didn't directly refer to in his speech, said that although the re record industry assures us that illegal downloading on the internet is the main reason behind the fall in sales of records, this phenomenon is not as black as it is painted. In the midterm, it will help increase the demand for music. So it's actually helping out the record industry in, in some ways. So lastly, the artists will be affected. It consists of music, musicians, uh, songwriters, producers, and singers. Um, he says that they don't get the royalties they rightfully earn, but he doesn't cite any musicians saying that this is the case, and he doesn't use any evidence to prove this point, so it's irrelevant. He says nearly all artists, 95 to 100 percent, 
depend on the, those revenues to earn a living, but there is no citation, there is no argument on that. And um, he uses a lot of the RIAA to base this on, but that is a record, it's representing record companies, so it's a biased informant. So, and it doesn't reflect the true popularity of the fan base. Um, actually, one of the um, artists, Tony Grebel, said that he um, is always in demand for stage shows in uh, countries where there's a lot of piracy going on, and so he earns a living that way. So I don't really understand how um, he's claiming that it doesn't represent a fan base. So his evidence was lacking, and he wasn't really, he didn't use all the causes and effect to state his claim. So this claim has some serious issues with it. Uh, main claims listed, the secondary claims are cited each time you get to one. I thought that it was a good idea to start off with that definition about bootlegging not equaling piracy because that becomes relevant later on on one of your claims, although it's not all that important on any of the others, so you might have been able to wait and make that argument when you got to that particular point. Um, the signposting on the individual points is pretty good. Uh, you've got a general challenge out consistently on most of the points about how can you measure the uh, sales that are not made as a consequence of this. And I think that's an okay press. There should be a little bit more explanation about why it's hard to uh, make that kind of prediction, but I thought that it was a reasonable challenge to make in most places. And like I said, it, it gets repeated quite often. Um, the, uh, the, the notion that uh, bootlegging and Piracy are not the same thing. The definition is pretty good, but the notion that bootleggers therefore don't end up compete, competing with uh, sales, your explanation there is pretty clear, but, <coughs> but your proof is lacking. And so I think you've got an interesting assertion on that point, but some data would be uh, more supportive. Uh, you had pretty good challenges on the third point. Um, on the fourth point, uh, you're making basically the same challenge on the numbers again. Uh, you've got uh, the one source saying it will actually increase demand for music. That's sort of a vague conclusionary claim, but at least you've got a source on it. Uh, the third, on the fifth point, you've got a general challenge to the RIAA being biased. I think you need to have a little bit more explanation other than the fact that they represent record companies. Why does that mean they're biased? I mean, the primary reason they're biased is because their sales are going down the tubes, and that's the whole issue that you're talking about. So why would they be any more biased than somebody else that you happen to be citing? Then you had one example that you used on that last claim, and it was pretty good. Signposting, like I said, is pretty good. Uh, your audience contact is generally solid. I just think sometimes that you spend a lot of time analyzing the issues without making a declarative statement on the point so that it's a little bit sharper. Thank you.